So quite a bit of setup went into this operation. The day before, Kevin from Modern Cyber Alliance and me set up this system. I used the HDMI cable, some couplers from Princess Auto, as well as the Phoenix 200 and my old Sony camera. I set it all up through the TV, but what I wanted to do was set up a surveillance system that would have a live feed directly into the spider hole. So if you ever wanna set up your spider hole for surveillance on a budget, this is the recipe. Hello. You're recording now. I am. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> this is so freaky. What the? <laughs> Dude, you got surveillance in here now. That's crazy. Weird. So here, I'm gonna see how long my cable is. You're all tangled up here. You want me to help? Yeah, if you can help. You got a, you got lots of cable. You just got no. Uh, Hang on, I gotta... Here, surveillance. Who's coming? Oh, you gone. <laughs> hi, quick hide, everybody. Who's that in the bush? <laughs> we've, got, we've got her rigged up to the TV. Here. Yeah, give me some more record. As much as you got, I'll take. Okay, yeah, keep going. Here, maybe Don can pull the, pull the cable out if you can there, Don. We can't see, we can't hear you, only you can hear us. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't hear you. What? I can see the, I can't see the bag. Okay. Okay, I can see the bag now. Well, then you won't be able to see us. I think you gotta disconnect it to twist it out. <laughs> Kevin, can, Kevin can hear us, but we can't hear him. Oh, you can't hear me? We can't see, we can't hear you, only you can hear us. We need a microphone! What? You can disconnect the cable and untwist it! I can't hear you. Ah! What? Disconnect the cable and untwist it! Well then you won't be able to see us. Well yeah, but do I really need to see you? Alright, we're gonna try something new here. We uh, we got a good live feed. Go ahead, do it. I'll disconnect it from the TV and then we'll drop it down the vent shaft. Okay, whatever. Make sense? All right, we're gonna try okay, I'm just gonna. We, uh, we got a good live feed. Go ahead, do it. Sounds like I'm tripping out, man. I can hear you coming from the hole, and that's weird. I'm gonna feed it back down here. This is the, uh, this is the tunnel here. So he's got the Wi-Fi hooked up here, and then that goes down into the tunnel. So, so Don's just taking some of the twist out. I can't see. Oh, there I can see the shaft down there. Anyway, hopefully this will this will give us a little bit more reach. So we can get the camera like right, right on the squirrel. That'd be the trick. All right, I should help Don here. Are you down the shaft yet? Oh, we're working on it. It's coming. There, Don's getting it down the shaft. You see it yet? Maybe just pull it out and we'll just see if it'll... Untwist. Untwist as we pull. Okay, so this is where he's coming from. Under here. And then he's got to fish it through that. Vent. See it yet or no? Nothing yet. You're in the pipe, right? Yeah. Are you beside the pipe? No, I'm, should I be beside it? You should be in it where the black line goes. Yeah, that's where I am. Okay, I see it. Okay, take as much as you need and then stop. I'm gonna, we got the cord cable down there. I'm gonna see how far we can reach with our wired technology. See if we can get in. We can, I think we're gonna be just right here actually. To, uh... Can you see Kevin? It's gone? Yeah. Can you uh can you zoom in tight on the camera here? I can see the bag. <laughs> that's strange. Sounds like I'm tripping out, man. I can hear you coming from the hole and that's weird. Yeah, I can see you on the TV. They can't hear me. <laughs> Everything? Okay. That's all we got. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right guys, before we get too far into the video, I wanna thank my sponsor, Renogy. This is the Renogy Phoenix 200. This is by far the smallest battery pack that I have ever tested. It is super portable. It's got a great handle on the top. You can easily carry it around and it's also super light too. It's got a ton of inputs and a ton of outputs. Inputs meaning you, there's a lot of different ways that you can actually charge this. You can do it with a regular wall outlet by plugging it in 
through the DC input. You can also charge through a cigarette lighter adapter right here. And you can also use solar. And the trick about this is you can actually charge this while discharging it, meaning you can have solar power charging the Renergy pack while at the same time powering the things you need. So what I have here is a Tacticam battery. So that's gonna go in the USB-A. I always get those confused. And USB-A as well for my GoPro. So I'm gonna see how much draw I have. I have obviously 100% right now and I have 25 hours remaining using this draw right here. So again, you've got your cigarette lighter adapter, you've got your regular wall outlet, and as I said, there's lots of different ways that you can charge this. So the applications here are obviously endless. For me, obviously charging camera equipment, but you guys can use this on a camping trip, any kind of off-grid living situation, on the road if you guys need to charge things up. It's a pretty handy kit to have, and like I said, it's ultra portable easy to carry. So you guys check out Renergy website. There's a whole range of products that you guys can look into. This is probably something that's going to suit your needs. So guys, check the link down in the description below. You're going to find a Renergy product that is ideal for you. Again, this is the Phoenix 200. I've used a range of Renergy products in the past and I've always been happy with how they perform. So again, guys, use those links down in the description below and let's jump back into this video. Well guys, it's been a few days since I put the corn out here. As you can see, there's still a ton of corn left, which doesn't make me feel very confident. You guys can see that chewing a hole right here. And so it was still active. And then when I came up, I did hear a red squirrel chattering. Red squirrel is not my target species today. Although they were a fur bearing mammal and I can sell them for the fur, they don't carry a lot of meat. I want to eat some food. So hopefully we have some grays or black squirrels in the neighborhood. I need to get all set up. I was here a couple of days ago getting set up with Kevin uh, from Modern Self Reliance, but we didn't get everything uh, organized yet. We got the cable set here, uh, but I have this whole system planned out. This probably doesn't look like too much here, but this is a giant live trap. In fact, you could probably fit a fox, a small coyote in there. This used to be stuffed all the way to the top, like the gate wouldn't actually close in here. What I did was I put them in here in order to protect them from squirrels. Now, this is what a black walnut looks like here. It, it is a lime shaped uh, round ish kind of uh, nut. Okay, so inside this nut is the nut. Inside this casing is the nut. And it has a very strong odor to it. And squirrels absolutely love this. So much, in fact, that they actually <laughs> managed to clean up a lot of the nuts from inside of here through the cage. Okay, so you've got one brand new this year. So they dropped early and then you can see, this is from inside the trap. They managed to cut into the hard nut here and get at the nut meat on the inside. So this is one that didn't get chewed on because it wasn't reachable from the outside. So this one here should be a nice dry preserved nut inside and the squirrels probably will still like this so my plan is to bring this up with me and spread it around a little bit and try to attract some squirrels my ideal solution would be to get some brand new ones because these like i say have a very very strong odor and they're perfect for attracting squirrels to the area well before i get too hunkered into the japanese spider hole for the rest of the day i thought it'd be good for you guys to get an update on the pond situation here we got the fish we're going to feed them in a second but first, check out the uh, food plot from uh, Cabela's Bass Pros. It came in pretty good. I don't know if we're attracting any animals. Certainly, we're not going to get any squirrels coming in here. But uh, it came in really good. Kevin's just going to grab some feed here. I'm going to show you, because you, you guys want to know since the last video whether uh, the fish are all dead. And it's been a disaster and all that stuff. But uh, there's some good news here. The deer really like to eat the tops of it and like the top of the root here. But it's all the way through here. And there actually does look like there's a bit of an animal trail coming through if you've seen some of the other videos. But it's green and it's lush. And if we get deer coming in, we might be able to hunt from the cube over there or the sauna or the cabin. Watch, watch how responsive these fish are now. They're all okay. dead. One, two, three, go. That was the worst throw I've ever seen. I, I've been like an arc. <laughs> you rainbow through it. I rainbow through it. So as you can see, the temperature has improved. 
the water quality has improved a little bit, not a ton, just a little bit, but the fish now are super duper active. Kevin didn't do the greatest throw. He threw it more, more in the shallow, or shallows here. But uh, once they get going, man, they're getting airborne. It is crazy how active these fish have become. So right now what we're trying to do is add on the feed bag. We're fattening them up right now because we're, we're, we're gonna feed them right till about uh, freeze up because that will get the maximum amount of poundage on them. And then we're not gonna keep the pond here for the winter because we wanna be able to skate on it and we can't have the aerator pumping bubbles in here because it'll make it unsafe to skate on. Counted 14 splashes at once. So that means there's 14 fish feeding at the same time. Then they, I don't know, 30, 40, probably. Like I said, we only lost three. I've only seen evidence of three, three gone. Was it three or two? Two or three. Maybe. Two or three, there's two or three. And I think that was just stress for moving them. I don't think we lost any due to habitat. We'll see when we take them all out. The final tally. Take it in like that. Oh, we're gonna go that way. No real easy way to get in. <laughs> Gotta be able to like get up oh, like that. and shoot. What about tree stuff? Am I gonna be able to do it with this thing here? Like through the hole? Who came up with this idea? <sighs> all right. Right. Right about there should be good. And then we can have good surveillance right over here. This is a, quite the operation here, not just to be able to hunt out of the spider hole, but also to capture the action. So this is our rigging here. And we're going from the stump, as you guys saw, to over here, we wanna make sure we have enough cordage because we are wired, we're not wireless. Oh, so many moving pieces. But we want to get the action for you guys. Something like that. Okay. Alright. I'm going to have to switch sides again because I can't reach. I'm going to straighten it out. Straighten it out. I'm going to plug in the HDMI cable now here. So I grabbed that from uh, Princess Auto. It's just a connector HDMI female. Female, female to male, male. So it's a coupler. And that will actually be helpful to us because it's gonna make up the rest of the difference here. So I also got this uh, HDMI cable from Princess Auto too. So that just goes to there. And then that goes into here. Rigging from here, camera down here, wire down to the trunk and into the spider hole. So we're getting closer here, guys. Um, I also have a little bit of a backup plan here. We're working through just about everything. This uh, browning camera is gonna go on that tree because I wanna be able to film myself shoot. So I've got a, I've got a live trap because I wasn't really sure this is gonna work 100%. You guys see me up there, so I don't know where I'm gonna put that. But uh, we want to we want to have like a second second option here for uh, catching a squirrel. So I'll talk about my secret bait there in a second. Okay, that's a good good bait bundle. Like I said, I don't know if there's anything good in there or not. It's, I can set this as a hair trigger. It's basically got that to the foot pedal there right and it just latches in here so you can actually set this little nub here on a hair trigger so it can you could just barely barely touch the foot pedal back here guys just barely and that'll latch down and close and again this is a case i can't get a good shot off on a squirrel and i found the best bait is a uh, apple because it carries a a big long scent you see how I just triggered that with that of course the black walnuts also is something that the squirrels will key in on so we crush these to get the scent dissipating as well a tube of peanut butter like that is going to be dynamite we're going to clean up our mess here we'll put more corn out if this doesn't work today we're going to put more corn out 
We gotta get down and get situated. I've got a pot for cooking. I've got my gun. But with these browning cameras, you can actually test on the screen. And I can see that's aimed too far. So we gotta get that down a little bit more. So if we're gonna do the best squirrel recipe ever, we have to get some water. So we gotta, oh, look at that. There's deer tracks here. That's pretty sweet. And that water looks absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. There's no way I'm drinking that water. The water levels have been really low, which is, have been affecting the pond as well. But uh, as you can see, the pond levels water have been fairly resilient. I did bring a liter of water with me for drinking, so that's going to have to do. Okay, we're going to do 1080p. That's good enough. 1080p. We got everything we need here. Oh, now we got to get into the tight squeeze. tight squeeze the flashlight will be an emergency flashlight in case we need it so here's our phoenix 200 and it comes with a power cable so you can hook that up to your uh, regular wall outlet and it's also got a cigarette letter adapter which of course we don't read right now. And you can also hook it up to solar as well, but uh, we're just gonna rig this up here to the hot plate and then we can get it going. Induction, so it's gonna use pretty low amounts of power. All right, now that that's running, we just gotta wait. So this is kind of practice, whether we can get up out of the hole and shoot quietly if a squirrel comes by. That's what we've got to be able to do before the squirrel figures it out. It's not going to be easy, boys. Like ideally we put the lid on, but I don't know. Okay. Here we are. Get everything situated here. And you've got some camo. I don't know if I need my camo or not. So my weapon of choice is browning. We've got a 22. You know what? If it's gold, it will fold. This is a beauty of a gun. And then I've got a Vortex scope on here. This is like way overpowered. And I've got the Tacticam game camera on there as well. So this is like way too much for a squirrel. But you know what? Browning said, hey, do you want a gun? And I said, yep. And then Vortex, I got 50% um, off if I said Vortex enough times. So there you go. Tacticam. Vortex. Well, before I get totally settled in, I want to let you guys know that I did sight in my gun too. So it's important to always sight your weapon in. That way, not only are you paying respect to the animal, but you're also paying respect to yourself too, because there's no point in going out hunting if you're not going to hit what you're aiming at. So check this out. The uh, T-Bolt Brownie with uh, just um, target, 22 target load uh, LR, long rifle because that's all you need for squirrel. You don't need much more than that. So it's just a Blazer um, 22 ammunition. Just It's just target load. Squirrel doesn't take too much. And so we'll get that loaded up. I, I forgot, straight away I forgot that we need to get this uh, this TV on to make, sure, to make sure we're keeping an eye out for squirrels. So hopefully I got the right button there. There we go, fired up. And uh, hopefully we've got a live feed right now of outside and everything's working. HDMI one there. Well, we got a bird. <laughs> this is this is so freaky, man. So I've got the camera outside recording, and we, oh, this is perf. This is actually this is freaking me out. How awesome this is. So we can even check keep an eye on our monitor. We got a full full battery. <laughs> this this is killing me. This is awesome. So I've got like a perfect view of anything approaching, which means that as soon as something gets in here, I can sneak out and get my shot. I'm loving this. This is amazing. This is, this is like really, I can't believe this. Oh my gosh. I am thrilled with this. <laughs> we got like live surveillance here. I wouldn't even have to, rec oh, there's a, there's a red squirrel coming in. The, oh, 
there, there's a I can go out and shoot a red squirrel right now. It's right there, and it's freaked out. Okay, it freaked out. It went back. So it's just at the corner of the frame there. Um, so this, you know, because I made a lot of changes this morning, so I think that squirrel, you know, is going to be a little bit timid. So we want them to get comfortable again. That is hilarious. But you know what? If we get like a gray or or a black squirrel, I'm going to get on it right away. Red squirrel, I don't care so much for. Like I will shoot one and we will eat one. It'll be about the same, but there's not nearly as much meat. That is freaking amazing. We're testing the feasibility of hunting out of the Japanese spider hole. Uh, this is also from uh, Princess Auto, I think. Uh, our Bass Pro, I can't remember. I think it's from Princess Auto. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on and get our, a squirrel roasted here in the pot. So what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna boil this for, gotta keep watching the monitor, boil this for a couple of hours and then we're gonna fry it. But there's a trick, there's a key here that I had to do some experimentation to figure out how it would work best on how we could cook a squirrel the best way so it was delicious and tender. So stay tuned. Oh, there, 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 there. That's, that's a grace, that's a squirrel there. That's a, that's a gray, that's a, I thought it was a gray squirrel. That's a red squirrel. He's just coming up the tree here to do some surveillance and they're gonna be keying in on those walnuts, I'm sure of it. And then they're gonna be working around for the corn as well. He went up that tree and he's having to look around. Remember, as per our orientation, we're over here. So me talking might be signaling to the squirrels a little bit as well. So I don't know how quiet I need to be with the door open, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on things. Well, if we don't get this TV to work, we're gonna have to hunt the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way, like how our, our uh, <laughs> World War I with the Japanese spider holes went. So World War I or World War II where they used those. Anyway, they, they would have had to stick their head out there for most of the time to be able to figure out what's going on. There, we got the TV back on. I'm hoping we're gonna get some blacks or grays coming in. Otherwise, we're gonna be eating a little peasly, measly red squirrel. Oh, come on. You know what, Murphy's Law, right? Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. It's gotta be something to do with the humidity here. It keeps wanting to turn off. There's nothing wrong with the battery or anything. It's just, for some reason, we're loaded again. We set to go. Try to pop back out on a red squirrel if we get another chance here. Be nice if it would stay on, don't you think? The tacticam is ready, but uh, we're gonna. Tr if a red squirrel comes out again here, I am going to try to shoot it. But what I'm gonna try to do is sneak up uh, there, right there. There's a little red squirrel, but he's nowhere near the bait. We want him to go over here because I know if I come out here. I won't be able to, sh there he's, now he's going in. Okay, so let's see, let's see, no, what happened there? We just lost contact. Uh oh, that's not good. What happened? I don't know why the TV's doing that. Is it got a loose power cable or something? It's back on there now. Of course, we missed our squirrel opportunity. The technical issues, there's a squirrel, a squirrel over here. See, he's very, very, very timid. But I know, I know which way they're approaching now. They're approaching from the. Come on, why? We got a red squirrel out there. We got lots of action. He, he's a lot more comfortable about the bait there right now. He's gonna go into the walnuts first. Um, I'm trying to get this water to start. I don't know how to work this. There we go, working. Okay, water's boiling. Squirrel is gone. No, squirrel's back. Okay, so so here's our chance. So what we're gonna do is uh, locked and loaded. Is he still there? <laughs> Not there anymore. Oh, there he goes. He's he's making runs for it. Okay, he's in there. Let's go. Oh, I gotta do this real quietly, guys. Oh, I gotta get the tactic cam on too. Where'd he go? 
it went. He took off in that tree and he was chattering, but I couldn't figure out where he went. I don't think he's gonna come back for a bit though. Oh, I don't want the red squirrel anyway. <laughs> it's funny. I can hear him chattering on the on the surveillance camera here. But he is absolutely not in the frame there where I can see him. That's hilarious. All right, well, let's get comfortable because this is going to be a long haul. I don't, did you guys see this emergency exit? So this is another option where I could hunt out of. But um, if I come through there, I don't think I'll get a good vantage point because it's kind of in kind of a little ditch there. So this might be the best bet just right here. That uh, that squirrel's got to calm down. I think the, the cage is still open. So everything's functioning as normal. The red squirrels typically won't go inside those uh, live traps. The, the blacks and the grays, they'll go in there all day long. Well, I'm not sure if you ever watched the video of Kevin building this uh, from Modern Self Reliance, but uh, basically there's a port here, which uh, comes down. You can get a good fit at a really, really small, narrow opening. It's about as big as your shoulders and it's completely camouflaged. You can check out Kevin's uh, video if you want to see that. But uh, essentially it's like, uh, I don't know, six six foot by six foot seven foot eight foot room it's got really cool uh, lights on the top and uh it's got this exit port here which is the emergency exit he built so there's a little bit of airflow from the top to the bottom which is crucial and you can actually use a, a trolley to get you out and he's got everything rigged up he's got shelving countertops here he's got a bed here even and of course the tv rigged up for outside which apparently doesn't want to work today which is a big issue but i it keeps uh, wanting to reset, so we're going to have to keep on that. He actually tried to um, dig some water here, so he d dug a nice big pit, and then there was a little bit of water in there. Because it hasn't rained in a long time, the water table has uh, lowered quite a bit. But we have some ideas as uh, expansions on this, and maybe going another room. Oh, there's a TV back on. I don't know why it keeps turning off, but the red squirrel is back already, so he wasn't do too deterred. But that, that red squirrel is going to be in and out all day long, is my guess. But the go time is really going to be when we get the gray or black squirrel. So we got to keep we got to keep vigilant because this is going to happen pretty fast. I got to get uh, three more bullets in here because of, of my uh, all my misses. I don't know why I'm missing. I think it, the scope is a little bit off, like maybe two inches. I think it's two inches uh, high. So I, have, I think I have to inch, aim two inches low just because of how it's ranged in. But we're going to get it dialed in. And uh, to be honest, I don't really care if I got that that uh, red squirrel and I want the gray or the black. TV keeps turning off. I wonder if it's cause it's like so humid down here. I brought my camel with me, but I'm not sure I'm going to need it or wear it for now. And uh, I've got some snacks too. Okay. I got some nuts and some chips and some sunflower seeds. Oh, that red squirrel's out. The TV's a little fritzy, but let's give it a try. I think I got him. 
<laughs> I think I freaking smoked them. Oh, did I get them? He was right on that stump. <laughs> I freaking smoked him. <laughs> I can't believe that. All right, well I got a, I got a, I got a red squirrel. Well, there we go. We got, we, <laughs> we got, we did it. We successfully shot a squirrel. Like this is close range too. Like that squirrel had no idea I was there even though I shot at it a whole bunch of times. Okay, is this guy dead? That's a successful squirrel hunt, boys and girls. There we go, guys. Whew. All right, well, back in the pit we go. All right, guys, we got ourselves a delicious squirrel. Delicious squirrel, delicious squirrel, look at that. Okay, so I'm not gonna clean them down there. Ordinarily, if this was like a war zone, we would be doing everything in the hole. But we have the luxury of doing things slightly differently because we are in peace times. So I'm going to go get some gloves and we're going to get this guy cleaned up right. Try to preserve the fur and all that good stuff because then we can sell it for some money. So I'll show you like kind of briefly, quickly how to quick clean a squirrel I can't show you in detail unfortunately because that's just the way the world works anymore you're not allowed to teach anybody vital skills of survival so you take your squirrel like so and what you're going to do I cut the legs arms and the feet off like so feet arms and then we're going to go from one foot to the other foot over here straight across there's the line the fur line there and then we're going to be able to uh, take the tail off and then we're going to pull it all the way back like so. That's if you want to keep it, you keep the fur. If you do not want to keep the fur, the easiest way is actually to pinch back here, go straight through, go all the way around and then pull both ways and kind of undress it like a sock. All right guys, got it all cleaned up and uh, Kevin's been hanging around so he came to rescue me he told me that i can't boil with a stainless steel no you need a, something magnetic so this is <laughs> the that only one, thing that one works i own that's magnetic all right so you're so. gonna you're gonna boil it in the kettle like what about my coffee after this is it be fine yeah it'll be fine you just have to rinse it out oh there we go it's going for a swim and then also the tv's not working i don't know if you know that but the tv's not working Call technical support <laughs> you are tech support okay run up there and hit record on the camera so that's back running uh, uh do i gotta do this Okay. okay, here you go. Alright. Because we, I, I gotta keep hunting. I only have enough. It's not enough to eat. I need more food. Show me how this thing works. I don't understand what's wrong with the TV. Alright, how do we get this working? Did you try this? It seems like this TV wants to work for about 5-10 minutes at a time. At the very most. And then switch off. I found guys that if you, as soon as you interrupt an area like this, it takes at least 30 minutes before the squirrel activity will resume. They'll just move off into other places that are not disturbed. So, but the idea was like not to be coming in and out at all. It's basically just to be staying in here, hunkering down as if this is like survival Armageddon kind of situation where you're just like stuck underground, but you want to come up every once in a while when you're, when there's food available. So now you think my stainless steel pot might work? It says gas, electric, ceramic, <laughs> dishwasher, induction. Wow. It says induction. There's a metal plate in the bottom of it. I couldn't figure out the buttons. Oh, this might work better anyway. All right, well, hit the on button, and then I did that, and then there's a plus, and then and then I went out. But well, it needs a pan. We we'll just close that, and you'll know when it starts to boil, when it starts uh, to whistle, and then you open it up and let it boil for two two hours. Two, an hour and a half to two hours. Oh my! Is that gonna last? It's gonna be steamy in here. <laughs> That's okay. Well, it's not gonna be that steamy. You shouldn't change. You should, you should change your ambiance. Maybe some like blue light or green, red light. <laughs> it's all rigged up. Dim it down. Oh, actually, there we could make it brighter. Well, dim it down a little bit. That's, it's better. That's as low as it goes. That's pretty good. I don't like it. Look, look how cool this is. You got you got surveillance now. Look how I got it set up like on a wide shot. It's pretty cool. I I I killed. I like it. how the leaves fall. Like 
I, I, get my needles. I killed the only red squirrel that was active out there, so I don't know if, if, if that's the only one nearby. You see the traps there set, there's the walnuts there, and then there's corn all set up there. So, like, I've got two hours, I could just sit here and relax and watch Squirrel Vision if the TV stays squirrel on. Squirrel Vision. Squirrel Vision. <laughs> This is this is the future. This is the future of the, hunting. You could deer hunt out of here. You could, yeah. you could just oh oh oh, 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 <laughs> oh TV. Maybe that's just we, we got, need a new TV. Well, you know what? There oh there goes again. No, but it'll do that. Yeah, uh, maybe it needs to. You can only periodically hunt with it. You need one of those outdoor TVs. And well, the, the TV's working just like you just know how to touch it. Yeah. I bet you that TV's gonna turn off. As well, soon, soon as it warms up again. The only reason I get stuff is because people think it's not that great anymore. So it might have been broken when I first got it and it periodically turned off in your favorite movie. Dude, look, turn around and look how awesome that is. It's very awesome. Oh, she's just about to boil. Oh, there the TV went again. It flickered off. I don't know if you guys are watching Modern Self Reliance or not, but we got a ton of things going on there. This is a little mini RV on a trailer. And I think what Kevin's doing is getting the TV out of the the van. This is the camper van. You got it? <laughs> oh boy, I left for two seconds and uh, we got a little bit of an issue here, boys. Oh, we got to get that off. <laughs> there you got goop everywhere. Oh my. She splashed all the way up there, all on the bed. We got squirrel juice everywhere. Okay, shut up. Shut off. Oh, what happened? Why did it do that? Dude, we got a problem. We haven't worked the bugs out on this one yet. You mean you can't uh, cook unattended? You can't cook. Like, we got steam in here. <laughs> <laughs> smells like squirrel. And uh, she overflowed, and we got squirrel goo juice everywhere. Ooh, oh. <laughs> she got a little steamy in here. <laughs> oh, you gotta open the, <laughs> open the vent. Dude, Murphy's Law. Dude, you think anything's working today? Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't. Cook, maybe we can't cook in here. Um, maybe if I maybe if I put the induction thing out here, like in the tube, and then the it'll and then it close this up, and the tube will suck well, the yeah, air out. It'll, it'll just it'll go. <laughs> you can't cook unattended, man. You almost burn my place down. <laughs> Steamed it out. <laughs> Look, all the stuff just shot everywhere. I don't know, uh, the TV's broken. We're gonna shoot steam all over it. Can't do two things at once here, apparently. They, I was supposed to, it was all supposed to work perfectly. I had it all planned out and everything. Give it back to the guy who gave it to you. Maybe, maybe it just doesn't like underground. Maybe it's like an <laughs> above ground TV. Did you ask the person who gave it to you? Uh, what was wrong with it? They always say it's good. They don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> they just want to get rid of it. HDMI 2. Whoa, I got it. What'd you do? You press 2? No, I just plugged it into 2. <laughs> Just go like 20. Yeah. Hey, good? I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. I get the bugs worked out. All right. So, old TV out, new TV in. Okay. So, um, you gonna watch this boil now? Well, I th I don't want all that steam in here. Can I can we put it up there? We can just point it that way. Will it reach? Should I just point the, point the steam that way. It'll go out the hole. <laughs> you like wanna try again? <laughs> Round two. I gotta keep keep this door open. Well, this, this was time. this was closed, right? It was closed, but the lid was off. Also, it shot out this side. I think. Well, I don't think we'll boil over now. Well, you can turn it down. You just go like you just go just, down. Just you got to be at simmer. Well, you can. Okay, there's simmer. No, I don't think it's voice activated. Squirrel. Yeah. No, it actually, doesn't really. Fresh, like, fresh squirrel. Smells like hand. Just light simmer, a couple hours, tenderize the squirrel, and then. Uh, we're gonna go to stage two. Pan fry? Yeah. Is that thing? What is that? Pan sound? fry, and I got oil. Some some oil in there. Well, it's the same as the other one. It's a set. And then I got some delicious sauce to go with it. Well, all right, guys, we're, we are we are in the coast phase of this challenge because, well, we've got the TV working flawlessly now. <laughs> we figured out the hot plate, so it's rocking. I've got the Renergy Pack charging up some batteries I already used, Tacticam and the GoPro. And uh, I get to enjoy some, well, some squirrel covered snacks because obviously with the water overflowing on that, we got a little bit of juices flowing on the outside of my snacks. But hey, everything's working finally with some perseverance and maybe some luck 
and then obviously having somebody who's technologically savvy, you know, Kevin from Modern Stuff Lines is able to get everything rocking. And there's, of course, there's no squirrels now, but we're going to keep at it. We're about, um, I'm looking at my watch here, which I don't have. I'm about uh, 25 minutes into the boil here. So we got about an hour left. It's an hour left of hunting. And we're definitely going to end up with some kind of delicious surprise at the end of this. So stay tuned. I hope we get a black or a gray squirrel coming in. It doesn't smell horrible in here. <laughs> it doesn't smell great either. It doesn't have like, it's got some circulation. This is probably not enough. But uh, I want to tell you guys about the process of cooking squirrel. As any wild animal is kind of tough, especially if like you shoot it immediately. That's why we talk about like hanging uh, deer, hanging game. Well, historically, actually they would have hung other animals too, as long as they weren't too damaged. Uh, geese, ducks, something like that, they would have hung it as long as the temperature was ideal. So we're kind of speeding up the process here with the boiling. And what we're doing is we're making the meat relax. We're making the meat give up. Now, ideally, I would add some wadobo spices in there. I forgot to bring some. But that would infuse inside the meat and start breaking it apart. So a little bit of fat, a little bit of salt. But more important than that is time. So after a long period of time, those muscles are going to start to break apart and relax. And incidentally, a lot of the foods that we eat are treated in the same way. They're given time to relax. This is pretty neat, this exit tunnel here. You can see the, I don't know if you can see out there, there's a slide. But if you want to go check it out, check out Kevin at Modern Soft Reliance. This will slide me right out to the exit. So I keep this open and then we're getting some good airflow because it's uh, drawing that moisture out the door, which is ideal. So our TV is working a lot better, but still no activity. It's been about 20, 30 minutes. Again, there's nothing moving around here. This is the problem with using the pine forest as a backdrop to a hunting location because there's not a lot of food habitually in the pine forest. So this is probably a resident squirrel that hung out there maybe keyed into the corn the last few days. Kevin's out, so I'm going to get rid of this so that I can actually get in and out of this dang thing if I need to shoot. Okay, got it. Okay. Ladder back in. You good? I think so. All right. Yep, yeah, thanks. This is kind of what I was looking forward to. It's just being set up. But of course, you know, all those bugs had to be worked out. I need to make a nice flat spot to be able to get in and out, but all these things keep bothering me. We got a simmer going here. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, simmer going. Oh, it would have been nice to get like a good allotment of walnuts, but again, Murphy's Law, what could go wrong, did go wrong. Another red squirrel there. It's been about 20 minutes. He's right on the stump there. Let's see if we can make this happen. I don't know what happened there. I guess uh, the benefit of having this camera out means that we can review what happened, but he was on one of those stumps there and then as soon as I popped up, not there anymore. Well, now is a good a time as any to get a bit of an experiment going here. I'm curious if I can rig this up here so that I can just poke out Japanese spider hole effect you see it's really tight so I might have to have a gun out here I don't know but that's how it closes up just like that
So here's the emergency exit. Obviously you can go all the way in there. You can see our food cooking. But uh, you could come and shoot out here, but it would be, it'd be tricky. That is a small squirrel, it looks like. But we want to try to see if we can fool this squirrel. It's pretty timid though, it's up on the tree. I gotta go do two trips. I have to do a trip to get the lid off and then I have to come back and get the gun. But it's back pretty far. We'll see if it comes into the, the bait here or not. It's definitely wary because it keeps popping its head up. We're gonna give this a go, that's what we're here for. So it's, it's pretty comfortable, I think. Pretty comfortable. All right, let's do our two trips. We gotta do one trip to open the door first. I gotta get this door open first. And then we gotta go back and get the gun. Okay. I thought it was easy enough. I'm gonna come back and get the gun. And the gun's not that easy to get up there, guys, because um, we got to make sure that we don't make a mess of the barrel. We can't get anything in the barrel. And then we're going to see about this, this whole size, whether we can fit through it or not. we got to do this really carefully. Pretty sure I got him. Which tree was he in? Oh, there he is right here. <laughs> I got him. That's two. I can't believe that. I, I was about to give up there too. Oh, I hear another squirrel. There's another squirrel over here. He did it the hard way too. Although the squirrel 100% figured me out, alerted and went up the tree. So I don't know what it's seeing, but it's definitely seeing something. How could you see anything from like down low? Me moving this and then I placed this log here as well so that it would block the view from that direction. And then the other thing I could do is like leave the gun out here, but I don't think that's very safe to just leave it out and then I could just sneak out and then shoot. This is just regular run of the mill, sweet baby rays. Sauce, ooh, that's hot. There's a hot squirrel. Okay, put him up there. Focus, hello. Okay, right there. So if we pull and those fibers snap apart, we're on the right track there. Okay, so I would say as far as the squirrel goes, we're close, but we're not 100%. I would say if we went another 20 minutes or so, we'd be right in the money. The best way to do this is actually throw it in the oven. Okay, cook it like you would a chicken wing. Put it in the oven and let it bake. And that's looking good. 
My batteries are all charged up with the Renergy Phoenix 200, my Tacticam. So we can unplug those. What we're trying to do is break those fibers up, right? You wouldn't normally, you wouldn't do this if you, if you had the boil time correct. So trust me, if you guys do this properly, do it two hours, I think, I don't think we're quite two hours here. We're probably about an hour and a half with mishaps. It's pretty good, right? It looks like a little bit messy, but it also looks pretty tender, which is what we're looking for. So the question I would ask you guys is, do you think you guys can make it surviving in here? How long? Like if you, the only way you, the only reason you could come out was to like hunt something, right? So you're staring there at the screen waiting for food to come by. You could live like a, like a proper hermit. And imagine, uh, probably wouldn't have had a, Maybe they would have had a good setup like this, a Japanese spider hole. Maybe they had a, a place to cook and hang out and eat and sleep and stuff like that. Uh, but I wonder like if you could hunt like turkeys or deer, what do you guys think? Do you think you could hunt turkey or deer from down below where they're not expecting to see like just a head poking out of the ground like that? But uh, definitely try this technique. You, it'll work on anything. Like I've done this with rabbit. Ooh, it pulls off the bone and my mouth is watering. Look at that, beautiful chunk of meat look at that it looks kind of funky because it's all shredded up but i wanted to make sure it was ready to go let's have a taste yeah just what i thought it's it's like 15 or 20 minutes away from being like perfect look it is entirely edible and delicious well Get to hunker in here now. I got one squirrel left, so obviously gonna keep that for uh, breakfast. You gotta conserve calories since we're on a survival challenge. And I need to cozy it in. I did forget my pillow. I forgot pillow, so I'm gonna use the, my camo as my pillow. But uh, obviously gonna watch some squirrel vision as uh, nightfall approaches. They are calling for some rain tonight, so I'm gonna keep an eye on the monitor here. I might have to pull the camera down in order to preserve it, but I got some cool, Cool mail from a, I guess it's a fan. I guess we can be co-fans though. Um, so I don't know if you guys are still watching the series alone on the History Channel. I think we're up to season nine. So I was sent this by a fan, a co-fan. I'm a fan of his as well. It's Juan Pablo. Uh, I'm not going to give you any spoilers about how the season went, but I'll tell you it was a really good one. So you guys can go uh, catch up on that series. But it's a it's a book. It's called Thrive Long-Term Wilderness Survival Guide. And it is a massive, nearly 400 pages, extremely comprehensive uh, take on survival. To say that I'm uh, impressed by how this turned out <laughs> is, a, is an understatement. It, uh, it, it does, like the animals do not suspect that you're here at all. Like I'm making noise talking to you guys, but they don't really expect that you're going to pop out of the ground and, and go after them. Animals nowadays, they're, they're coming more, becoming more and more accustomed to looking up, especially deer, because we've hunted them uh, for, you know, 20 years now. In tree stands but before that they didn't look up now they're starting to have a peak every once in a while and they smell something and they're, they're looking up and they're getting their nose up because they're trying to catch the thermals so hunting from underground may be the next <laughs> it sounds funny but it, it may be the next thing and obviously your scent is going to be trapped down here too and absorbed by the earth um so and if and it wafts around and they're kind of the and animals and deer and things are looking up they might not they might not catch on. So this might be a, a thing of the future. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. It's cool, he's got some of the shelters that uh, we kind of built on this channel, or uh, Modern Soft Alliance channel here. Like simple tarp shelters that you can build with like minimal effort. And um, we've got cool things too. We've done, the, we've done this on the channel too. Like the um, using two trees here to uh to break a uh, branch it's actually a good review of like a lot of the things that we've tried on the channel as well as some of the things that i don't typically do because i'm not allowed to like the uh, primitive traps we haven't done because you know i have to use certain traps when i do trapping i'm not allowed to use um primitive traps they have to be uh tested for 
uh, efficacy and also for uh, being humane. But he's got like, uh, you know, beaver trapping methods too, which we haven't done any uh, stuff like that underwater by the dams yet. We've done mostly the stuff like up in, up in the air or up in the air, up in the, the water surface which uh, have been fairly effective to me. But like this stuff, as he's got it set up, is like bang on, obviously finding the, uh, the beaver runs. And oh, there's a, there's a dam break set right there. So we've done that before. I don't think we've got the dam break set to work yet, but we have definitely got one to work with uh, using beaver lure. So this really, this book's got everything. So let me know guys, do you, do you think I can like do something maybe longer here? Like, trapping season's coming up so i was thinking i could put like a trap in the culvert here and probably attract some animals and i have some more extensive traps i could use too uh you know like some connie bears and some footholds would be interesting to set up like around here um and see how just see how long i could go living underground like a hermit i think that would be an interesting series so I'm going to, I'm going to snuggle up here now, guys. It did actually start to rain a little bit, a little bit of light drizzle. So I did have to take the uh, camera out because I didn't obviously want to get wet and get messed up, but I will put it back out in the morning if, uh, if it's not raining too bad, but, uh, I'm going to tuck in here and, uh, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> I wish I had my pillow, but I'll make do. It's not so bad here. Like so, I gotta get that light out of your face and put it in mine so you guys can at least see here. And uh, I tell you what, it's really comfortable. It's it's obviously there's no wind, <laughs> so there's no way to get cold beyond like how cold it is in here. Maybe it would get a little bit colder, maybe about as the air temperature, because obviously it's gonna fall. But I think you know as winter comes, it's gonna be you know, getting quite a bit of heat, latent heat from just like the earth. So it'll be about basement cold. But like the big thing is there's no wind, there's no draft, there's no, like I don't hear any sounds at all coming from outside. So you can imagine it's probably muffling my sound quite a bit as well. I'm going to hit the sack because it's, uh, it's about uh, 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock or so, like something like that. And uh, I'll get up early for the morning hunt. But uh I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Uh. Uh. <coughs> oh, I had to get the light. Where's the light? Well, there we go, guys. <coughs> Well, morning guys, can't really tell when you wake up if it's light out. So, and I just heard a, I heard a splash. I heard a little bit of water coming down. So what I want to do is actually get out and uh, get the camera set up so that I can hunt this morning. If it's raining, if it's not raining too hard, we should be okay, but yeah, it's raining. Ugh. Yeah. Yep, she's raining. Man, you cannot tell the weather for anything down there. But uh Oh my shirt's getting wet here. Well, we can't we can't hunt if it's raining boys. <sighs> Not with the camera gear. Well guys, quick check out there. Um, I'd like to hunt for a little bit, at least I kind of get the morning hunt, but if it's raining, can't do that. So it kind of sets our plan. Whew, it got cold and it got drizzly. Well guys, back into the safety of the hole. This is no weather to be outside fiddling around with hunting. I'll bring that squirrel home, obviously. It'll take a little bit more time to clean it out and the fur, get the fur saved and preserved. And uh, probably, um, share it with the family so not always lost but I did want to be able to hunt obviously but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen so I hope you guys thought this was an educational experience if you guys want me to do something more extensive 
for sure let me know so i'll catch you guys on the next one i had fun on this one i really did it was legitimately fun and relaxing at the same time so more adventures to come see you on the next one